This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we are back to change that evaporator coil we found bad on, on one of the other service calls I did just recently in the last couple of weeks. So we've got a brand new coil there that we're gonna be replacing. And uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, get that removed. We're gonna have to recover it which we've got the uh, tools and everything all loaded up here on the uh, Olympia cart here. It's kind of a medium duty cart. It can't handle a lot of craziness, but uh, it does fold up, which takes up a lot less room. One of the things we're gonna try out today is gonna be the torch set here by Ambro. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot smaller and lighter than a traditional one. Obviously, this is not made for doing humongous jobs, but as you can see size-wise, there's quite a considerable difference here. And weight-wise, uh, that's a pointer finger and a thumb holding it. The only thing I can see that I may not like is the fact that I can't really use some of my tips. This is an Australian company. So you can see the torch handle looks different than what we're used to a lot of times, but it does come with the soft hoses and the flashbacks uh, right here you add on to it. And uh, what's kind of unique about it is it runs off map gas and, and their own proprietary bottled oxygen. I've gotten some decent life out of it. Uh, obviously it's not a very big bottle. This is not, like I said, something you want to do humongous jobs on. This is gonna be for up in attics, roofs, you know, little in and outs. The only thing I can see is not having the ability to run some of my tips that I've got that are specialty tips that I have to use with my particular handle. All right, as you can see, they got smoke detectors all over this place. So there's one with the air handler. So I may end up trying to braise it up there on the roof. That'll make it a little easier. Basically a little trip hook. Lift up, unhook, lift up on this one. Homemade. Looks like they actually got a convenience. That worked really well, didn't it? That snaps together. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace that pressure control and we're gonna replace the evaporator. And they have a smoke alarm, smoke detector right above the unit, which we wrapped a plastic bag around. And we have them put the smoke alarm system on test. So if it does trigger, the uh, fire department won't get called out immediately. And uh, that just comes down to communications with your staff here at the school. Now head pressure controls right there. Right there is the sight glass that we charged by the last time, which I'll put a link to the video right here. If you didn't watch that, you probably should watch that first. For giggles, might turn it on. See how low it is. I should have looked beforehand. I didn't think about it. You know what? I don't care. We'll just measure it out. All right, so the plug up here is no good. Go figure, right? So we're gonna go ahead and steal power off the contactor like all heathens do. Uh, we're still good on our level. It uh, just kicked on and it's uh, up there at the top. We'll go ahead and still power with the death cable that I have yet to gotten zapped because you got to be a little smarter than the cable but we'll go ahead and uh, get that hooked up and disconnect contactor so it doesn't try to run when I kick it back on mine has a fuse on it and a lighted in so that if you hook it up wrong you'll have a really super bright glow yep contactors pulled in there we go, all better now. Got the 4CFM NAVAC pump here. Pulling through the testo gauges. Yeah, I could probably use the blue hoses right there. I'm not horribly concerned with. I just want to get her into a good deep vacuum. There's no moisture in the tank. Let's go ahead and get this thing recovered soon as this tank is ready. <laughs> I notice I'm not pulling any liquid out, so we need to probably kick on that solenoid there, which is the liquid uh, solenoid. So we'll go ahead and get our magnet out, and then we'll stick that through our uh, actual coil. That way, if we do have an accidental energization there, it should be good to go. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and stick that in there like that. Flip that over top of it so it doesn't fall out. Put our magnet, 
like that. And it should be pulling, yeah, look at that. Now we're pulling liquid. See it plain as day now. Go ahead and shut that suction. We'll just pull liquid first. I'm surprised she's not chugging yet, but the old Inficon Vortex Dual is pretty uh, stout. We'll let it pull as much liquid as we can, then we'll open that suction back up. We're dumping it in through the vapor side. We'll measure a tank when we're done. I did have the actual weight of the tank empty wrote on there somewhere. Tar weight, net weight, water weight, Bob's weight, and Lily's weight. Kind of gets confusing after a while, but either way, we'll measure it in when we do it. Good old purge feature, gets her all the way down there, getting all of it out of the machine. It's not something you see anymore on most machines. You now my Appian didn't have it. Thing's got a hellacious uh, fan on it. Okay, we should be good to go. Benefit of the bucket here is everything kind of comes out when you need it, goes back when you don't, and uh, makes it a little easier to get everything you want on one trip without making multiple trips back and forth. Okay, let's go ahead and purge. We'll just purge both different directions, just kind of try to get as much out of the coil and as much out of the condenser as possible. That way on some of the different spots where we can't necessarily get it to flow through, we will have it free of any oxygen and that way you're less likely to have any carbon. So what I like to do is hold it up and see if you can see any distortion through like green stuff, so anything you can see a distortion if you move it back and forth. Basically you're looking through right here. If there's any refrigerant at all in there, it's gonna cause a wiggle and a disturbance in the visual. So we purged that through the high side. So that would've went down through the evaporator, came back up through here. So the evaporator's clear. Getting it completely out of the condenser is a little difficult. You gotta have a way for it to flow. There's just not a whole lot of anything in there. So we're just probably gonna have to let's go ahead and get her undone, do as best we can with it. Okay, so what we talked about is this torch is here. This is kind of unique. Those are easy to move around because they're real rubbery. Here basically, that right there. You got your own oxygen bottle, your own acetylene bottle. Well, it ain't acetylene. You got your own map gas, which is technically called Map Pro. Didn't even know they changed the name of it. You can get it, in this case here is a backpack, but the backpack's really big. I think it's more hassle than what it is. If I'm gonna have to get something big, what's the point of, of, of trying to go smaller? I know lightness is, uh, how much it weighs is some of it. So this just screws on to the oxygen bottle. It has a depressor right there in it. So you just crack the oxygen up, crank that up. Okay, see where we're at there on that. The gauges are fairly decent. They uh, kind of are a little sticky. You can see it kind of, it's maybe just that there isn't a good uh, volume of gas there or if it's just the actual uh, gauges. So you've got two different tips for this thing. It says three on it, but I don't know if it's truly a number three. That's a number five. So we'll go with the one that's already on there. I've already kind of fiddle farted with it a little bit. So it's really bright out here, so it's gonna be hard to see. So we'll go ahead and turn on our gas first, like usual, light it. As you can see, it looks funny. It comes out like a refinery type flame. You can cut that back a little bit. We're running about five or six PSI there. You can cut it back to there. We can turn on our oxygen. It's got a little bit of turnage before it finally starts to hit. So we've got that right there. There we go, more normal, so yep. So we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and take this thing over there and see if we can get this thing apart. We'll just set that down here out of the way. Let's see if we can get this thing heated up fairly quickly. Like I said, I don't hardly have used this type of torch tip anymore because I like my other torch tips better, but this is what you're used to, won't be a bigger deal. So this is three eights right here. It's all about getting on and getting off quickly. That's already liquid, pull it away, boom, got it. And uh, really didn't have to get it that crazy hot. So we got that one done first. Let's go ahead and pull this one out. So we'll watch our tail, make sure our tail's not getting down there, melting stuff. Heat up our primary pipe here first, which is the little one inside there. Once we see it go liquid, start getting it into the actual body, just like normal procedures. Probably have to get my hand in between here and pull apart like that. There we go. Kind of roll that around a little bit, get that away from the end. There we go, good, so it'll slide back onto the next one. And then finally, you know, if I can put my hand on it like I'm doing right now, we're probably pretty good. Let's use a pair of pliers, make it a little simpler on myself. The torch feels pretty good in the hand. I mean, it's, it's different looking than what we're used to. I think it just might be the 
European style of some sort. So we got a little bit of liquid, just about got it. Can't tell if I'm pulling straight up, I am good. There you go, out it came. Does the job, don't it? So we'll kill the oxygen and we'll kill the gas. Uh, it was actually all the more I had to do. So uh, I've only used it probably twice so far. So now we're gonna go ahead and bleed through it with some more nitrogen and that will get us cleaned out. So for right now, if I did get any uh, buildup of, of uh, carbon in there, which it doesn't look like we really do, I usually keep some little brushes and we'd be able to run the brush up in there, twisting it and then pulling it out. So it's coming out of that one, coming out of that one, not so much that one. So like they said, uh, when I talked on the last video, this is an LA, LAC4, just a traditional head pressure control. I've done everything from pulling the head while brazing it. Um, if you do pull the head, that'll allow the nitrogen to come through it. So we know that's the exact same lineup. There we go, everything looks exactly the same. That one says 180, so yeah, we're good to go. This is where the Baco comes in handy because it gets in there nice and tight. Doesn't hit the um, brass body. You don't have to do this, but to me, just a little extra reassurance that uh, I'm not gonna hurt the head and allow the nitrogen to escape around it when we're brazing it so that we have less chance of having carbon buildup. We'll put a little oil on that when we put it back together. But right here you go, not a big deal. So that's about all the more I'm gonna take it apart. I'll still wrap it with a uh, wet rag. I can go ahead and just yank that out, no big deal. All it is in there is a spring. It's not going nowhere, see? And that spring pushes down with the head and then the pressure on the other side pushes up. That's how she works. I did a video on that if you search. I'll see if I can remember to put a link and stuff. So let's just set this over here so we don't lose it. But as you can see, it's got little edges uh, that are cut into it. That's why you don't need to over tighten it. It's a nice brass fit there. And then it kind of hooks into that there. So it's not sealing on these threads. It's actually sealing on the body. That's why uh, you don't want to get too stupid tight with it. So, and of course that one will fit good. This one will fit good. This one though has been changed. So that one is an actual inside piece. And then of course, it's impossible for people to deliver things without breaking them. Fabulous, just fabulous. To make a little extra room, cause I hate when a stub gets in there and just doesn't have enough room for the heat to hit the center conductor first to pull into the uh, fitting. We'll go ahead and just chop off a little bit here. So we'll go ahead and just sand this up a little bit. Okay, we got that on, put the purge through. Coming right out through there. Can't wait till that smell goes away. I'm sure it's probably mainly oil, but did I lose the battery? This piece of shit may have quit recording. My GoPro is getting super hot, acting stupid. So, to say the least, we got it breezed and pulled into everything. Okay, it appears that we've got it. Let's check this other one. Real good on that one. And looks like real good on that one. So, we are golden. And just like that, GoPro screws me over again. I gotta love them. And they want you to buy number 13 now. So it braised it in there with no problems at all. I recorded it, thought it was recording. It wasn't, that's nice. But you can see it did a really nice job here on it. It pulled it right into there, no problems at all. I was able to pull uphill really well. Yep, so, so we're good to go there. We'll go ahead and put a little bit of nylog on there and that pin is square on both sides so it doesn't matter what direction it's going there we go and that's brass and spring and you know that's the reason why i did what i did because this is the most delicate thing let's put a little bit of that on the threads there maybe just a touch here on that we don't need to gorilla grip it you can feel it, the resistance where it's pushing against that rod theoretically that should probably be all we need Okay, so we went ahead and just brought this up here on the roof just because smoke alarms all over the place tied into a monitoring system. As you can see here, I don't know what they were thinking, why they thought they needed this humongous brazed on cap on the suction line. That's just stupid. Also, I mean, this, this here, I mean, these guys must have had nothing better to do that day. There's that. Cut back on the gas. See if we can warm that up and make it come off. It's uh, probably three quarters. Got a little more fuel, add a little more oxygen. Starting to see some liquid. That's just a big old hawking, hawk tui of a freaking uh, heat sink here.
There we go. Drag that back so I can at least get my piece on it. That's why these idiots didn't need to do this. It's just dumb. So that there's nice and hot. There we go. That's not going nowhere. There we go. Simple as that. It's draining that oxygen. Holy dog crap. So you might be able to get one repair out of that oxygen and you're gonna be drained. That's crazy. Also no way to really understand whether or not you're full or not on your fuel other than lifting it up. So, I mean, it, it's, a little, it's a little cool. Um, you're definitely gonna pay a price, I think, for the convenience factor. I think this was 1600 originally and now we're at 650 maybe. Yeah, it's, it does the job, and I don't have, I didn't bring any extra ones with me because I wasn't sure how long they'd last, but I got a whole box of these. We got the coil all cleaned out. There was a little bit of charcoal in there, carbon. So we got that out of there. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn on the purge, and we'll purge through this while we're down there doing the rest of this brazing. There you go, I can feel it, good deal. So as you can see, right there's our coil. You can see the smoke alarm right above it. And it's got a bag on it with a rubber band holding it. And we just turned off the power right there. Let's see if we can get up here and get this thing out. And of course we made it Phillips. Heck yes. Well, that's exactly what I would use as Phillips. And why would you want to use 5 sixteenths? Got that right there. We're gonna get some of that crap off. Looks like this thing should lift right out of here. Can I embrace it here? Let's we'll switch that to 163. Uh, they got it screwed on the other side over there on that. That's nice. And then I've got this thing right behind me. It's really working out great for me. So we're trying to get that with the Leatherman. Because I really don't feel like making my fifth trip out the door and have to go through 65 different locks to get through and get in, get out. Of course, we don't have no key cards either. So we went ahead and scratched this up. This is foam right here to catch on fire. They had this wrapped in foam and then they put that tar um, sticky stuff on there. So let's see if I can squeeze this in. This is very, very difficult to do anything because this thing here is just absolutely ridiculously right up my... So we're going to try to get this off. Well, that's really not good. You know, all kinds of smoke going everywhere. The fiber rag got torched. It bounced the heat up into the wire, so we're gonna fix that. And uh, yeah, I like my other torch because I can control it. I could have went with the U shape, but it got it hot. And the best you can is what you got to work with, man. There's just so much you can do. So much you can do. Those wires right in a good spot, didn't they? There we go. I'm gonna relocate this thing. No reason for it to be down here and all this flammable stuff. That make more sense to you? Makes more sense to me. Boom. Thought the oxygen would last a little longer. I have one solder joint to go and I don't have enough for it. I have some home, but not here with me. So we gotta get this one out. Basically my take on it, that uh, torch is able to get the job done just fine. Um, if you like a pointed tip, it works great. Uh, I like the rosebud tip because it gets things done a little quicker. But as uh, far as its capabilities, I mean, it, it can do probably seven eighths easy and down. I think it might be rated for higher than that, but I mean, everything I see, it seems to be able to do it. Other than that, and the map gas and stuff, which I don't know what map gas is versus, you know, acetylene. I think we get this stuff pretty cheap. So anyhow, that's uh, that part. So let's get this last bit here. There we go. I don't like burning the paint off. Simple as that. Get her on, get her off, get her done. Run it and see how it does. We should be able to dump the charge back into it and be done with it. I'm gonna zip screw this on this way and I'm not messing with this. This has got pins up there. I don't see no reason for it.
All right, so we're at 782, still dropping. That's on the opposite side of the hose. So we're gonna let it run for a little longer, make sure it holds. I'll also just do a test here on a blank off test. See how bad it goes up, which it's gone up kind of crappy. Okay, down to 1.8, 1.9, so should pull both sides. We got the scale zeroed out, we're in ounces. Let's do the total weight here. Drop her down, drop it, drop it low. Okay, gonna give her a little bit of liquid into the old suction and we should be able to take off our high pressure our low pressure gauge here yep okay now we can finish dumping the rest in liquid let's see it's on positive dump away now we can always use the recovery machine just to pump it in all right so we've got ourselves uh 9.97 on the uh, richter scale there all we gotta do is bleed out the uh, machine just making sure that we don't have any uh, air in there and we will be good to go just like you do your hoses for charging any other way and that will speed it up quite a bit uh 9.9 .9, so let's just let's, uh 9.9 .9, let's just say 10 pounds right down 10 right there so we don't forget zero it again we're gonna throttle that in so we don't blow a pump up see we're dumping liquid right on in there we're only doing it into the liquid line half a pound so far this is a lot quicker and uh Make sure that we get it all out of the tank and we don't have to go out and dig out 407C out of the truck. Now it's doing its thing. Go ahead and get this off. And we'll get this on there and then we'll go ahead and start running it. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this thing running. If you remember the last time, we were looking for 235 pounds, I think it was. I've got it written on here because I knew I would forget. 30, 240. Sight gosh should be halfway per factory and uh, make sure we're bypassing. Oh, there went your liquid level. It just went back down. See, I told you. You gotta run it. Let's see if we feel any hot gas bypassing. No, no. Now on this other one here, like I said, we want to pull that coil off. Stick that through there like that so it don't burn itself up. So technically we're at 12 pounds, 0.7. Let's go ahead and Continue to pump that in. All righty, looky there. We are just hitting that halfway mark right there. That's where they wanted it at, right at the halfway mark, right in that snappy spot. 13.6 pounds, about where it can be at. We're gonna mark this thing so that we know exactly how much it holds. So we went and grabbed the 407C out of the truck. I kicked it down to 62 degrees. That level is just starting to flash a little bit, so I would say probably a quarter pound is probably all we're going to need. There it comes up. So one pound area at the top of touch. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. So we're going to go with 14.5. How's that? We'll take it down to 10. 14.5. That way we'll know what the total weight of this thing is. 14.5 pounds total charge. We'll go ahead and put this uh, top on. Kind of a disaster. Things didn't go as good as I hoped. Smoothly as I hoped. Let's put it that way. It didn't go smoothly. It got done just fine. And the main thing uh, is raising that around all that combustible foam tape was one of the dumbest things I've seen. Uh, just no common sense. Oversized caps, once again, goes right with the same mentality. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. I'm out of here. It's working like it should. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.